Alice, I understand one of the reasons that you're here is to present the report by the Chamber, the Czech Taiwan Business Chamber, um, arguing for a BIA, a bilateral investment agreement between the EU and Taiwan, and that if going on purely economic reasons, a BIA should have been signed already. Yeah, yeah, I, it should have been signed already, you are right, uh, because um, of course the European Commission has already signed FTA with many countries in the region. And uh, uh, if we measured the results for the European economy, uh, they would be the same or very relevant or even higher than the results that we have, for example, with Vietnam, New Zealand or other countries in the region. So I think it's very important that the, the European Union start starts looking into the formats how to cooperate uh, with Taiwan and how how to structure the relationship, you know, to, to actually have deeper ties because the, uh, I think that the trade is important element of the relationship because uh, European companies are using Taiwanese parts, products to build their own uh, high-tech exports. So it's a very important relationship in the value chain. And uh, I think with such a strategic partner, it's important to, to find a way how to formalize the the cooperation or how to give it certain framework um, because currently uh, uh, of course the, 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 the European Union is maybe reluctant to, to launch new FTAs because simply it's it's too demanding to complete the process. So, so what are the sticking points to signing a BIA with Taiwan? Is it purely what you described as in the complexity of the process? It's, it's the complication of the process and at the same time, of course, it's kind of the wording game. So the European Union is, is looking how to do it in a sensitive way that would be acceptable. Um, still, even though European Parliament supports the, the FTA very strongly, the European Commission needs to work with individual member states and their interests. So this is what complicates the so matter. Are you referring to China? I, in a way, of course, of course. So, so they are trying to balance the, the whole things. I think what we are missing on the European side mm. is a clear roadmap how to work with Taiwan. Mm. Uh, and maybe the, there is a missing roadmap on the Taiwanese side as well. Mm. How to move out of this situation. So the, the, the agreement with China is frozen. Uh, we can't wait to kind of defrost, defrost the, mm. the, the agreement. We have to come up with a new solution. And I, I suggest as a start, uh, as a European Union always before uh, there is a FTA, the European Commission launches and something like impact assessment. So you are the executive director um, of the chamber and um, you arranged the visit by Taiwan's legislative speaker, um, Yoshi Kun, in 2021, October. And this, of course, followed the landmark visit by Milos Vistrichel to Taiwan in 2020. For you, when he, when he addressed the Taiwanese parliament and he said, I am a Taiwanese, of course, he was channeling John F. Kennedy's. Mm -hmm speech, um, his Ich bin ein Berliner speech. What do those words mean for you? Um, I am personally very proud that um, uh, he did the visit. We were very close uh, to the team as we were preparing this, with the business delegation, finding him. And um, I think it is a really legendary uh, journey. Uh, and he opened up the door for uh, deepening the cooperation and I would say he was at the right time at the right place and uh, I like uh, that it's not only about words but um, actually Mr. Vistrichel is working hard to and and to have the results to have tangible results out of, out of the visit and even though it's very difficult because when he came back uh, there was the, the outbreak of COVID in, in, in Prague and in Taiwan as well um, uh, I think that um, the Czech Republic is eager to, to, to create tangible results out of the cooperation, out of the visit, uh, out of the Yossi Kun visit. We will have another delegation next year. Um, the Speaker of Chamber of Deputies is coming in probably in March. So we hope that this will really happen, that uh, we will have this visit. Uh, I think it has been already announced during the, um, uh, the visit of Mr. Yossi Kun. And um, this is another opportunity that, that we... And, and at the moment that the Czech Republic is saying we are serious about the cooperation, we, we really want... Uh, uh, Would you like a TSMC fab in the <laughs> Czech Republic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, something everyone keeps asking me. And, you know, I think 
it's not about the PSMC. It's not about the direct line. I think actually the, the, the corporation should be way more pragmatic. There are um, many Taiwanese companies that are already doing business. Foxconn. Foxconn, Vistron, mm -hmm. um, Asus, Kingscar. Mm. There's actually a lot of Taiwanese Acer. investment. Is that yes. right? Compared to other Asian of, countries. Of course, yes, yes. And the Taiwanese companies are so important because uh, actually they are the biggest job creators. Mm out of East Asia. Yeah, I was um, looking at the chart in your report and I was quite surprised that yes. of all of the Japan, South Korea, yes. Taiwan was creating, what was the figure? But more than 24,000 jobs. Mm. Um, I think it's amazing. And at the same time, actually, the, the Taiwanese community living in the Czech Republic is so small. It's around 600 people. Mm. So the Taiwanese managers are able to create so much with such a little local stuff. So, um, I, and, and at the same time, Foxconn, is consistently the second biggest Czech exporter after Škoda. So I think, you know, uh, really the Taiwanese companies are, are an important part of our economy. Mm -hmm. And um, at the same time, there are Czech companies that has have a lot of uh, products, services that can be offered on the Taiwanese market, uh, be it space, uh, cybersecurity, um, smart city. Um, Czech Senator Pavel Fischer has told me that there's an incredibly warm relationship between the two countries um, based on them being democracies. For you, what is the bedrock of this relationship, which actually dates back decades? Yes, yes. Um, uh, we have been friends for a long time. Uh, the cooperation started after the Vlad Revolution. The president of Václav Havel actually accepted the, the biggest business delegation to the region, or I think to Europe, in 1995. So uh, we can say that uh, since 1995, we are actually uh, working together. Of course, like every cooperation, like ev every friends, it's going sometimes up and down. We, you know, we have better moments and when it's more intense and then uh, maybe it, then it's going to calmer waters. But what is important to say that we have been cooperating for a long time and it's visible on the presence of the Taiwanese companies in the Czech Republic. And we have something that we can build on, uh, which is important. Uh, so the base is here. Is it democratic principles like transparency that is that yeah we are like-minded countries of course we are like-minded countries uh, that they can rely on each other and this is w what of course is important part of the relationship that um, uh, actually we are very much alike you know uh, a small place locked up among big powers so we can we have a lot of things that we can relate to uh, and um, uh, uh, sometimes when we, we are when we are talking with a, a Taiwanese businessman, um, you know we have a similar attitudes uh, view on business.